What's up everyone? Got another video for you today. We're gonna to be doing some beef tallow. This is gonna be something new for me. I've never done it, so you guys are gonna be learning with me as I go. Stay tuned. All right, guys, check this out. You're gonna need a few things. First and foremost, you're gonna need some brisket trimmings. I got some brisket trimmings from a choice brisket, not a prime, not a Wagyu, but a choice brisket. And I figured, you know, this is what typically everybody buys in the store. And I'm gonna try it out first with this, just, you know, in case I mess something up, I don't wanna be spending a whole bunch of money on a brisket just to do some um, trimmings and mess them up. But it's fat, so, I mean, everybody loves fat, so. Who cares but we're gonna be doing that another thing you're gonna be needing over here you're gonna need a sharp knife you're gonna be needing some cheesecloth you can get this at any grocery store um, hobby stores if you can find it some are more expensive than others um, we're gonna need about a cup of water we're gonna be needing a jar now we just had a freeze down here in Texas and crazy thing is I think everybody wanted to start canning so I had, this is the only thing I found, and I had to go to Hobby Lobby to find it. So we're going to be sterilizing this. We're going to be putting that in video, but pretty much you can look that up on Google to see how you sterilize. Just takes boiling some water and put it in there and let it sit for a couple minutes. And you're going to be needing maybe a six to eight quart pot. I'm going to be using my Dutch oven today and a stirring spoon. And we're going to be cooking this on real low. So the first thing you're going to have to do, and let's we're going to get right to it. If you look down here with me on this beef tallow. This is what we're going to be doing. So from what I saw, you're going to be taking this, cutting it down to small pieces right here. You have to get them too small, but I figured that it helped the rendering process as far as the fat over time. Go and cut you some small pieces. From what I saw, that a lot of this meat, when it separates from the fat, going to be making what they call crackling, kind of like you have pork cracklings when you fry them over time on, on a low heat, this is gonna fry a little bit and now all that fat will separate, like I said. Get all this trimmings trimmed up like this and we're gonna get all this in the pot. All right, so we're gonna be doing this on the stove. We're not gonna be doing this outside. I don't have a propane grill. All I have is charcoal and wood. And I wanna be able to control my heat very low. So this is about how much tallow we end up with. Well, it's not tallow yet, it's beef trimmings. Excuse me on that. About halfway up my pot, we're gonna get this set on, get your burner set on medium low. I'm saying that's a bin. If you got the numbers on it, maybe it between two and three on your numbers, we're gonna try that. And we're gonna go ahead and put about a cup of water, like I said, in there. I'm gonna get that all mixed up right here so that water can settle at the bottom. And from what I'm learned, the water would keep it from burning in the beginning, straight off on the skillet. And these cast iron pots, they hold heat very well. They get hot pretty fast. So this should help it cook a little good. Um, break it down better without burning on the bottom. That's what, what's what, that's what I've learned about having them. And that's all you gotta do. And we're gonna be stirring this maybe about every 45 minutes to an hour. Now that water will actually evaporate out of here eventually. And some of these meat trimmings will be getting crispy in there. And the fat will render down eventually and separate from the meat, like I said. So stay tuned with me. Watch this, learn with me. Let's see how this turns out. And we're hoping it's pretty good by the end. All 
All right, so I think we're all done right here. Look how these came out. Fat's all rendered down. You got a little fat in here, but it kind of turned into crackling. And that's what they were supposed to do from what I gathered on some previous videos I've been looking at. So like I said, this is the first time. And we're going to go ahead and take these out right here. And I'm going to start putting them on here. After I get these all out of here, we'll go ahead and go over and put this over on the counter. And we'll get ready to strain this. And I'll be showing you how to do that in a minute. Probably sprinkle a little barbecue seasoning and see how these taste. I heard they taste pretty good. All right, so I got my oil. Took out all my little cracklings. I'm going to let them dry out and hit them with a little bit of seasoning. They're sitting over there in the corner. And we're going to have to strain this, guy. So some people, they, uh, from what I saw, they strain it twice. But I'm going to kill two birds in one stone. I got my cheesecloth in, and I got a strainer right here, a fine mesh strainer. And I got my little um, container right here. You Now, you want to let this cool down for at least an hour, hour or two. Um, this took me about seven hours, longer than I anticipated. Um, I had a lot of brisket trimmings in there, so that's probably why. But I didn't want it uh, to mess up on this, so I took my time on it. So let's go ahead and get this strained in here real slow. And be careful. And that's the color I think we should be getting. And the reason you want to have the cheesecloth in there because of, of the particles. Now they have different grades of cheesecloth. They got some fine mesh um, cheesecloth that's very fine, or you know, smaller openings if you would say. Get all that in there, like that. I think that's about it. I wasted a little bit, but that's okay. We're gonna let that all strain in there. It looks like it's holding the particles from what it looks like. And I think that's about it. Shake that out a little bit. Got a little dark, so I don't know what that's gonna do to it. Not too dark, but from what I gathered, this should turn white like a creamish color white. And it should last three to six months. You can use it for steaks. You can use it for a frying chicken. Obviously you need a lot more to fry some chicken in. Um, grilled chicken, basting it, all kind of things you would use like instead of butter or instead of lard. Um, just like people use duck fat. Uh, I want to experiment with these in some of the videos I'll come out with later. I'm going to be actually using some of this and just compare it to like using butter. Like if I do a steak, We'll compare that. So thank you for watching this video. Glad you learned something with me. First time doing this. Thank you for sticking with me. And till next time, toothpicks, beef tallow.